Tired of dealing with vein disease? Have your symptoms gotten worse? Oh, these spider veins are ugly. My legs and ankles are always swollen. My legs are tired of standing all day. While some symptoms can be managed by lifestyle changes, other factors are out of your control. Get help from the experts at Vein Clinics of Hawaii. To learn more about your treatment options, call 427-5565 or visit veinclinicsofhawaii.com. Aloha, Hawaii. It's time for the Vein Clinics of Hawaii radio show. Their team's approach to diagnosing problems and developing solutions and treatment plans are beyond compare. So let's get started with your host of the show, Mike Buck, and medical director, Dr. Randall Julep of the Vein Clinics of Hawaii. Well, there you are. Welcome. Welcome back. I'd like to have you with us if you've not been with us before, Vein Clinics of Hawaii. Um... Statewide started on the Big Island. As a matter of fact, worked its way here to Oahu, and we uh, about a year ago we started doing this radio show, and it's getting pretty interesting because not only are we finding out about all the different kinds of of vein disease there is, and the cosmetic look of it, and the the medical look of it, the the life uh, enjoyment and the life threatening, all of that stuff, but we also find that there's a lot of other things going on at Vein Clinic's office. And as I've been there as a patient, you know, often, I see different things going on, and I got real curious about him. So I asked the doc particularly about uh, some of the stuff that he was doing with lasers, and not only in vein surgery, but in other things. And before we uh, introduce our special guest uh, for the day, doc, I thought it would be kind of neat to talk about, before we talk about lasers, talk about ultrasound for just a minute, because this is a, a device that is now used literally in in every medical practice and every different thing and ERs and everything else. And it was kind of new to the mix. So if you know a doctor that's been a doctor for 30 or 40 years, he didn't have an ultrasound at his, at, at his uh, convenience, and neither did people in the vein business. Absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. it's one of those things that has made – uh, medicine and uh, you know many facets yeah. of medicine you know diagnosis yeah. uh, as well as treatment I mean you know we use ultrasound not only to diagnose the problem but we use it very extensively when we're actually doing procedures I saw this patients. I saw this one thing with you where you put this little ring on you on my leg and it, it like takes a picture yeah. through your skin yeah and isn't it in many respects I mean, what used to take diagnostically a long time to investigate, sometimes actually having to cut somebody open to see what's going on. Sure. Now you can take this device and... Yeah. Okay. Now, that being said, it's used everywhere, right? In in ERs, right? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, certainly in the OBGYN's office to see that little baby and all that's going on. Yeah. Um, now, sometimes the uh, the... Ultrasound is used as a guide to look inside my leg so that you can use a laser to do a treatment of my leg. Right. Explain that. That's above my pay grade. Well, you know, it, it's a combination of uh, two very high-tech kind of devices that we have these days that, yeah, uh, has made treating patients uh, much easier, you know, much more efficient uh, as well as much easier for that patient. You know, when we when we think about vein disease, as we've talked about many times, you know, our, our parents and uh, grandparents, et cetera, uh, if they were going to have their veins treated, they went in the hospital. Sign you were, up, yeah. yeah Bring extra clothes, you're going to be here a while. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, it was very invasive, and now we do things very minimally invasively. And, and yeah, you're right, even with respect to diagnosis, um, particularly in regards to vascular kind of problems of all sorts, um, the, uh, the ultrasound has taken it from a, you know, invasive kind of, uh, event to a completely yeah. non-invasive event. And, uh, and it, not only is it easier, but it's giving us much better, you know, imaging of what we're looking for. Okay. Now, so you, you take that as a build up to what we're going to talk about today and that's a laser. Uh, and, and there certainly is a laser being used on my legs and my, uh, there's, there's really, uh, a lot of things being done with laser. A, a dentist friend of mine is using a, a gum guy is using a laser, and this is a. It, it looks like this is the the tool of the century, doesn't it? Yeah, this laser. Yeah, yeah, laser. Um, you know, laser is just an energy source, mm-hmm. 
And so the question is, uh, how do you how do you use that energy source? Where do you put that energy mm-hmm. source? And what is that energy source being directed to? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, there are lasers that are used topically for yeah. one reason or another. Uh, there are lasers that we put inside the body to mm-hmm. you know achieve different mm-hmm. things. And yeah, when we're treating vein disease, uh, we use laser as well as other energy sources because basically that's all we need we need an energy source directed you know somewhere uh to uh, treat vein disease and we've been doing that for a while it's what's interesting to me is that there are many cases now where these lasers are being used and they seem to be developing new applications every day yeah which is really good i mean so someday you're going to be able to have a laser tune up on your car i mean it's it's that valuable of a tool. Right. So let's let's talk about maybe some of the things uh, today with our special guest, who's your RN, uh, Taylor Busker is her name, and she is, uh, you know, has worked with me as a patient and also does some some other stuff. I don't want to say fun stuff, but certainly more fun than than dealing with a leg ulcer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, let, let's talk a little bit about what are some of the things that are going in your off on in your office besides vein vein surgery. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it was kind of a natural progression. Uh we we treat vein disease and, and as you you've mentioned it's a, there's a huge uh spectrum of vein disease. Most of it is uh ne- is needing to be treated because for medical reasons, but there are uh there are people that come in with vein problems that are purely cosmetic sure. and we we've been doing that. So uh, as we have sort of evolved, we wanted to offer to people more, you know, cosmetically directed kind mm-hmm. of things. And it, yeah, in a sense, it's it is it is fun because um, you are uh, ultimately achieving uh, a better quality of life uh, for that person, a little better. Uh, you know, self-image. Yeah. I was going to say smoking hot self-esteem. Yes. You know, you just get a lot better. Than that. But but what what makes this interesting to me, uh, when I met uh, uh, Taylor, when I met you, it, it, it was you were, you, you know, you're a nurse. You're going to be helping me with some of my bandages and some of the stuff going on my legs. Um, so tell me a little bit about it. You're a regular RN, but what is this other interest? What is this laser stuff? How do you find about it? Yeah, how do you find out about a laser? What's this laser stuff? Why do I want to? Why do I want to get involved with it? Right, the first time I really heard anything of lasers was moving to Hawaii, and laser hair removal sounded pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're all in, you know, swimsuits all the time, and hair removal is pretty fun. So is that's it the when first you I when you have it. when you have hair removed laser? Is it like one time and then come back? No, not usually. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. It takes a few treatments, and mm-hmm. you know, depending on the person and how they react to it, it can take yeah. quite a few treatments. But I mean, you know, what a cool thing to learn about and then actually be involved in doing mm-hmm. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it, it's uh, doc. When you say some things are cosmetic, um, this is co- this is one of the things in your office. It's it's a cosmetic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pure, yeah. Considered purely cosmetic. Okay. Well, um, let's paint a picture then, uh, Taylor. Why should people come in and have this done? What is it that you do? Uh, What we do at Bain Clinics of Hawaii, we definitely, like Dr. Julep was just saying, help people, you know, achieve a goal Mm -hmm. of something. It's usually very personal Mm -hmm. to that person, whether it be from a scar, um, acne scars, hair removal, uh, dark spots, Mm -hmm. uh, aging, the sun. We're all exposed to the sun here and... We get that sun damage and mostly personal. Where were you when you first got involved in it? Um, You you obviously have adapted to it because that's what you're doing now. It must be, I mean, way past the experimental stage. I mean, when people come in now, you're the you're the lady. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do this. Uh, What is the 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 thing you do the most? What what procedure do you do the most? Uh, Two things I do the most would be skin resurfacing Mm -hmm. and hair removal. It sounds like, wait a minute, that sounds like it's going to hurt a whole lot. Skin resurfacing. Is that like sandpaper? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously, Doc, it, it came in like some of the things in your part of what you do is one tool or one procedure replaces another. And it's more effective and it's less painful, less invasive. Right. Right. Um, yeah, and I think less in, less invasiveness and diminishing or or de- decreasing downtime 
for the patient to achieve a goal is one of the ver- the most important things yeah. that we concentrate on, and uh, it really has had effect has, has had uh, an effect on how lasers have been developed, you know, over the yeah. course of the last twenty years uh, as far as treating cosmetic issues. Uh, you know, some lasers can be you know completely yeah. destructive of yeah. the skin. Now that's going to ultimately achieve a goal of you know smoothing the skin and you know yeah. because your 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 body is forced to re, you know regenerate and renew that that most superficial layer of your skin. Uh, but there are other ways to achieve that too, a less uh, a less uh, aggressive way in the, in that way. And we sort of have concentrated on that. How can we achieve a goal? But keep uh, the level of aggressiveness to a minimum, and therefore the downtime. And you know, when we talk about downtime, what we're talking about is, uh, you know, some very aggressive lasers uh, bring about such a, a reaction to the skin that people aren't able to even go out of their house for a couple of weeks. Yeah, you know, yeah. well, I, I don't. Most people aren't able to take two weeks off yeah. and you know not go out of their house. <laughs> I should say. Mm-hmm. So, so what? What I guess, Taylor, that does for you is. People develop a leap of faith. You know, they hear one thing, and and you're. It, it's maybe like when when you talk to a patient whose mom had her vein stripped and was in the hospital for three days, and you say, "Well, that's not going to happen here. You're done. You can go home now." Mm-hmm. You know. So, so what is it like when you when you finally when the patient finally gets it that what you're going to be doing is minimally invasive. It's not going to be hurt. You're not going to take two weeks off of work, but you're still going to get the same result. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we in the consultation part of the process, try to explain this is different from those more harmful lasers that Dr. Julif was just talking about. Uh, the recovery time for this is maybe 24 hours. Once wow. you wake up the next day, your face should be calmed down and ready to okay, go. Okay, so in other words, gals and guys, you, you're going you're gonna to meet with Taylor and have this done on a Friday. And when you go back to work Monday, you don't look too bad. Right. Or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and why, first of all, Obviously, you, you had to have gotten trained. So talk about when you first developed the interest of, oh, this is for me. I want, I want to learn how to do this. I want to make people feel better, look better. What, what, what sort of additional education did you need to do that? Uh, definitely. I trained under Dr. Julif and then also, um, you know, our specific laser manufacturers and company that we go through. I bet they love to come out and teach. <laughs> oh, especially yeah. come to Hawaii, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, my training, yeah, was mostly under Dr. Jewel. If he's been so helpful mm. and most knowledgeable about mm. it, then uh, I can say so myself. But I always learn and from him and ask questions if I have. But I've learned yeah, a lot, yeah. and I feel good about it. Well, you know, Doc, one of the things that I had to learn, and you, you ramped me up on that, and that is, you know, in your practice, whether it's vein surgery or late, everything has a price tag. And, and you know, everything you, in, in your place is pretty expensive. So, obviously, you have to think long term, and you got to think – how can we do this? How can we get this great equipment? And how can we make it so people can afford to do it? Because, you know, if you have something that can do something, but it's going to cost $4,000 a freckle, you're not going to have those freckles removed, right? So, no. so how, how does that work in the expansion of, say, in the vein clinics of Hawaii to make that decision? Okay, we're going to go into this. We're going to have some fun. We're going to increase people's self-esteem. We're going to make people look better with a laser. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well, there there is a dollar and cents part of it. There's no question about that. And uh, because, yeah, these laser machines are not cheap. Uh, and we have two different laser machines. Well, we actually have three different yeah. laser machines. Um, and uh, each one of them addresses uh, slightly different uh, problems and are, you know, kind of mm-hmm. individualized depending on what the patient needs and their skin type and all that sort of thing. Uh, but- wait, 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 wait. Would you use... One of the lasers that you do the vein stuff on, would that could that also be used for doing something cosmetic? Typically, no. Yeah, you, so that means you need a lot of equipment. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we, we have to, uh, yeah, you have to pick and choose. You have to yeah. decide which machines you're going to mm-hmm. uh, invest in and yeah. which ones are you going to, which ones are going to be most useful for, you know, your patients. Um, so that and, Taylor, that's where you come in. You got to tell Doc, hey Doc, there's a new one. I just read about the new one. Can we get the new one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I think that maybe I want to go back to this because I think that there's plenty of people out in the audience that were not necess- wouldn't necessarily be skeptical, but would be saying, well, you know, yeah, you know, this is all this new high fangled stuff. What's it really going to do? So let's walk through a typical co- consult when somebody comes in. 
So that means obviously they're interested. They're not. They're, they might be shopping or kicking tires, but they're a warm body and they want. They want to talk to you. How does that conversation begin? Yeah. So first we would just ask what their concern is. Yeah. What are you here for? Um, right. Yeah, what are you yeah, here yeah. for? A lot of it here is sun damage. You mm-hmm. know, fine lines, wrinkles. Yeah. Uh, luckily, with one of our lasers, the Icon laser, uh, we have a three for me treatment, which a what three for me? Okay, that treatment uh, will it's uh, three treatments or not three treatments? Excuse me, it's um, treating three different things: it's mm-hmm. fine lines, wrinkles, sun damage, and it's yeah. also um, kind of resurfacing the skin there. Yeah, so uh, you pop. You know that the more you have done at one time, mm-hmm. the the more reasonable it is right mm-hmm. okay so uh three for me yeah so that right. is a non-ablative fractional laser and an ipl laser so we're using two in one treatment i have no clue doc uh, you know <laughs> she's, she's the rn Did what, you, are, what you, is he talking yeah about? write all that yeah. down because yeah, yeah, there yeah. will be questions yeah, later yeah. there's a quiz yeah but yeah i i think um and just by by way of uh, Taylor taking over our our laser stuff, she hadn't really been doing that before. I mean, mm-hmm. she's been a nurse for a while, um, and her uh, her past professional life was mainly ER and, and uh, uh, post acute care. Yeah, yeah. so uh, you know, cl- pr- fairly clinical, institutional kind of stuff. Uh, but she really has taken over the cosmetic part of our practice nicely, and yeah, she had to go through mm-hmm. a fair amount of training. Uh, you know, not only uh, from the company, but also self, uh, you know, uh, education and th- that kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I'm sure, Taylor, uh, that, uh, also, I'm sure that, you know, the manufacturers, like I said, they have a vested interest at their machines being able to use for the max. I mean, to do as many things as possible. So that must be, it's an interesting ramp up for you because they certainly know their stuff. So you get the opportunity to get to with them. Now you're going to learn their stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So how long have you been doing this? Uh, with Main Clinics of Hawaii yeah. since January. Okay, so uh, and so, uh, have you already had some repeat visitors? Some people oh, absolutely. Came out? Yeah, because I, I think that one of the things that would interest most of the listeners, and, and I and I know that you know we're all vain, you know we all want something done, but we're talking about the little fine lines mostly, mm-hmm. and I'm guessing ladies, particularly eyes, nose, face, and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How's it work? Oh, absolutely. Um, and sense to the repeat customer, usually after, you know, your first few treatments, you feel pretty good and yeah. you're looking really good. Yeah, yeah. So after that, we can say, you know, come back, you know, six months, see yeah. uh, how you're doing then. If you're still feeling good, come back in a year. Maybe we can do touch-ups or... Yeah, uh, you know, and I know it, this comes up from time to time, but I know, and Doc, you can chime in on this one too. Um, is there sometimes confusion between laser and Botox? Mm. No, usually people that are in interest of Botox, um, are, it's pretty specific towards them and a lot different than the laser. Yeah, pretty interesting, Doc, because I do know that there's some modalities or some treatments that scare people. You mm-hmm. know, the story comes out and they oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so how do you explain the risks versus the value or versus the success on what you do? Do people want to know, hey... What side effects are there? You know, what, yeah. can, what can go wrong with this? Well, yeah, we and we go over that with yeah. with people. I bet. Yeah. Uh, you know, the our the client our clientele actually uh, across the board uh, they've become fairly sophisticated. So you know, with respect to uh, gee, do they know the difference between Botox and fillers and laser and IPL and all that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, many yeah. of them do. Many of them do. Um, so, uh, there really is uh, a minimal amount of education. I would say, Taylor, would you agree with yeah, me? Yeah, I agree. When we're, you know, when we see, uh, see a new yeah. patient and we're trying to investigate what they want, uh, you know, many, yeah. many of them are very specific about what they want because they've had stuff in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so there's not a lot of confusion, you know, Botox, Botox uh, is a medication right. that's injected into, you know, facial muscles to, uh, achieve uh, you know something that's go- going to result in uh, yeah. you know less uh, wrinkles and that yeah. kind of thing to the face. Uh, we uh, we also will be doing uh, f- what's called fillers as a you know general yeah, yeah. general uh, you know topic, um, and that achieves something else. And then, like like we've been talking about, we're offering uh, lasers and IPLs, and uh, you know w- with respect to how they are different. 
Um, it's all it's all light energy. You know, lasers are have to do with light, the transmission of light, mm-hmm. and that light creating uh, an energy source that's going to affect something. You know, yeah. it, lasers are uh, yeah. uh, lasers are pretty specific. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, uh, the, uh, the each laser has a little different wavelength, and that wavelength is directed toward a molecule. I think people get really excited when they find out how precise it is. Oh, it is. You know, it's, it's a yeah, lot more than much hit so. Yeah, because <clears throat> the other thing, you know, Taylor, which I'm interested in making people know that they're going to make their mind up, is that back in, in my day when I was a young man, if I wanted to do something cosmetically, you either do it word of mouth from a friend or somebody. But now we have this wonderful platform called the Internet. And I would imagine, that, like Doc was saying, that when people come get the consult, they got to listen to stuff. They already know what they want to do. They mm-hmm. just want to say, uh, the four words that you hear the most is, how much is it? Yeah. Right? Is, is, that, is that a kicker? How, well, I, you know, it depends. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing that people, when they finally do a procedure, mm-hmm. they're so stoked they come back for more. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. You, uh, must, you must like that. Yeah, uh, I yeah. do. I yeah. love, uh, from my background, I love yeah. seeing patients again and yeah. again. Yeah. I mean, I love to get them better, but yeah, yeah, I course. do yeah. love to, you know, build that relationship. Well, maybe and- the first time you see them, they're on a gurney. And the next time they walk in, you know, which is a little bit more fun. <laughs> no gurneys here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but, but seriously, um, I think that that's important because... Uh, Doc, you'd have to agree. We've talked about this yourself in your practice. In order to have the vein clinics of Hawaii and the number of locations, the number of people, each spot has got to have its people in it. Oh, so yeah. to be able to provide this service, you know, with Taylor is must be. That's just another good thing that this office can produce. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, most of our cosmetic activity is done here on Oahu. Uh, we also are doing some uh, laser, you know, procedures on Kauai. Mm-hmm. Uh, as of right now, we don't have that kind of activity in the other islands, but uh, it's been kind of nice having all of that in one location, especially here in Honolulu, mm-hmm. uh, because we can uh, offer you know those types of things to a pretty large number of people. If if somebody comes, uh, Taylor, into the Honolulu uh, Vein Clinic um, with uh, from the neighbor islands. Um, are there any conditions where it wouldn't be a good idea to have a procedure and go get it on an airplane, or is that all okay? Oh, yeah, that's perfectly yeah. fine. Which means you neighbor island people don't fear. Well, you can come on over here, you know, go to the go to a concert, have a couple of fancy dinners, get lasered, and go home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I, it, it is becoming common, isn't it, that mm-hmm. when somebody – I want to talk about, once again, your repeat clients that come back in and just – how, how good can they feel? Well, they just keep feeling better and better. Talk about some of those things, what people tell you that when they get back out there that they were, I went and played tennis today, you know, <laughs> or, or I went to the beach. I didn't wear any makeup. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, had a client the other day and was like, everybody's complimenting me on my skin, and it's yeah. so great, and every time it's getting a little bit better, you yeah. know, and then yeah. having that patient come back in and seeing the results and seeing if, you know, we're at a good standpoint, if they feel really good about it, mm-hmm. then, you know. You know, when, when somebody comes in to have a typical, a laser procedure, how long of an appointment usually is it? Um, depending on it, it can yeah. be anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. Okay. So, so in other words, you, you're not going to do like with veins, you do Maybe what a guy can handle or a gal can handle. Mm-hmm. But maybe with this, it's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And that also has a lot to do. You know, you ask the question, how does this feel? Like everybody yeah, yeah. everybody wants to know that. Most people describe this as uh, rubber band snapping. Yeah, we've all done that. On snap, your snap. skin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not too bad. Uh, and we try to mitigate that even yeah, more yeah. by using, you know, a topo- topical analgesic to, mm. to numb the skin yeah. a little bit. So there's even less of that feeling. Uh, that, that, that's good. Is there anything that, that requires uh, ongoing medication? If somebody goes home, I mean, are they are they going to be in pain? Are they, you know, is it just a standard, we'll take a Tylenol or, mm-hmm. you know, a Motrin if you, if you feel badly? Do they? A lot of times after a procedure, it can yeah. feel like you were just um, in the sun for a few hours. Ah, okay. And your yeah. skin can be kind of red afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for medication-wise, nah. uh, no, yeah. aloe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, I, but I think that that's important. And, and I guess that, you know, people learn it as fast as they can go click their mouse and and I'm I I basically because I deal with a building company, people come in with snapshots of what they want, you know. I'm, and I'm guessing somebody comes in and says, "See this? Can I do that? Can you can you do this for me? How do you deal with that kind of a client or patient?" 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Most of our getting uh, cosmetic clients anyways is pictures showing mm-hmm. people's before and afters that this stuff actually works yeah, yeah, and getting yeah. them actually in and in front of me to talk about if it yeah. will work for them yeah. or not because we like to be honest. Yeah, so. and you know, Doc, I think that your your the reputation of your practice and your clinic and your people is based on that. Here's yeah. honestly what you can't expect. Now, if it goes over and above that, bonus. Right. But, you know, I, I, I know that some people say, you know, when they have, you know, cosmetic uh the spider vein thing, which is an elective procedure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, are they going to be completely gone? Well, I don't know. Yeah. You know? Well, managing expectations yeah. Yeah, is a very important part of what we do. Uh, you know, I know every time I go in to get a haircut, I take a picture of Brad Pitt with me. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I say, hey, can you make me look like and, this? And they say, uh, yeah, but they're looking at like, well, look at this, <laughs> so, I want the impossible. So yeah. that, that's yeah. unreasonable yeah. expectation. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and but, you know, I think that in in most of in mo- most of what we do, you yeah. know, we, we achieve pretty good goals, whether it's veins or lasers or whatever. Um, but uh, nothing's ever perfect and uh and the the patient has to know that and yeah we try to be you know yeah. brutally honest with all of that one of the things that i think is important and taylor i've noticed this because i you know it's right now i'm going through several treatments and i've noticed that when i see somebody in the waiting room that immediately you have common grounds i was talking to this one guy yesterday i was in there for an appointment it just turns out or day before whenever it was anyway what was kind of neat was uh, there was a guy wearing his compression socks, and I'm a, I brag about me wearing mine. And I said, you know, you're not supposed to wear those only when you come in to see the doctor. He's, and yeah. he he gave me that look like I know. <laughs> I'm interested in what some of the the patients that you have what they what you've heard them saying to each other. You oh. know, and let's say you're, you're finished with Molly and Sally's waiting or whatever, and they cross in the hall and they've seen each other. Uh, what are they willing to share, and and what do you hear from them? Oh, absolutely. Um, a lot of times if it's crossing paths in between appointments, somebody yeah. comes out with a little bit of a red face and they're yeah. like, oh, how did how did Uh-oh. that go? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. that hurt? And usually it's no, it didn't. It was, yeah, you know, yeah. comfortable the whole yeah. time and, yeah. you know, share I'm having good effects or, yeah. you know, how long or how many treatments they've been yeah. doing. And that really depends person to person. You know, we are so much more outsiders here in Hawaii. Um, and I do know that the sun can be charged with doing a lot of this damage. Do you think that some of your clients and patients um, start making – I maybe it's not a good idea for me to do that quite as much as anymore if I want to keep looking like this. Oh, absolutely, because a lot of the – you know, preconditions and post conditions mm-hmm. of getting laser is staying out of the sun. Yeah. So mm-hmm. dermatologists love to hear that, don't they? Doc? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because they think the sun's poison. Well, I mean, a little bit you need, right? For di- well, a little yeah. vitamin D is good for you. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a little bit of sun is good. Yeah. Uh, but you know, our overall consciousness of how bad the sun can be yeah. for us has changed a lot over the sure. last twenty yeah. years. I mean, I know when I was young, nobody thought anything. Who cared? Yeah. Now um, you find out one sunburn can manifest twenty yes. years later with the melanoma right yeah. right you know i remember when i was young getting yeah. burnt to a crisp well you know nobody uh these days nobody would allow their children to do hey, that I, I hate to tell you this but back in the day it was monoy oil from tahiti yeah and we would put a couple <laughs> of drops of soy sauce in it so that you really got it, what you were doing it was cooking your skin okay yeah. one of the things i've been dying taylor ever since we started talking and that is i've i've learned now not just because i i never had any vein surgery done strictly uh, cosmetic because it just never really bothered me that much. But now I have had some done. So I want to know if you're seeing an increase in males, in men coming in, because I'm guessing absolutely yes. I think about half of my patients wow, right now that's are fabulous. Male. I would have mm-hmm. said, I would, if you'd have said 30%, I would have been impressed. No, nope, about half. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Doc, we're waking up. You <laughs> so, know? Yeah, yeah I, we went a little good too. You know why? Because it doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. Really, a lot. Mm-hmm. You don't miss it. You, you know, you're not staying. You don't have to be a hermit for a month, right? You know. So, I mean, and but can you make it gradually? Like, let's say a guy comes in mm-hmm. and he's got gray hair. Hey, you can't make you can make him a blonde, but it'd be a good idea to do it gradually. Is this something that are also done gradually? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, in stages, it, it, yeah, out of necessity. You know, yeah. it, it's not, and that's the that's the thing with. You know, most of our vein patients, we come in and we tr- we treat something, or you know, they have something treated and it's done. You know, right, right. Um, and now that's not to say that they, you know, we we have to follow in the future and yeah. make sure new things don't come up. But with laser, it is very much a stepwise fashion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one of the most common things we do is hair removal, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, everybody responds a little differently to 
yeah. you know, depending on what the patient's skin type is like and all this sort of thing. Do, but, men, do, do men do hair, hair removal? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, 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 second. You know, yeah. it's, it's, never, it's never a one-shot deal, mm-hmm. you know, uh, whether, whether you're looking at uh, hair removal or skin resurfacing. Mm-hmm. Typically, it's a series of, uh, you know, events. And, uh, you know, especially with hair removal, if it's, uh, you know, being, yeah. uh, uh, if it's being difficult, it may take up yeah. to six or seven, you know, visits to, mm-hmm. get, to achieve what they want. Okay, I got the, the dropper here, uh, Taylor. Let's talk about, I knew this one gal when we, were, when we were kids, and she used to get teased. She was a beautiful girl, but she had a mustache. You know, and I'm guessing that a lot of that hair removal, is that kind of hair removal? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, she... Too bad this isn't TV because Taylor's got a big smile. <laughs> that, that must yeah. mean that this is where you see like almost in something instantaneous, isn't it? Yeah, this is, that's so funny that you mentioned the mustache yeah. because I mentioned to Dr. Yeah. Julef, yeah. Dr. Julef, I have a mustache and yeah. I need to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, and I've yeah. had it. Yeah. I've done yeah. my mustache yeah, yeah. and had great yeah. results. So Yeah, and, and, and I, I guess that what were the options in old is they shaved. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I, you know, this girl... All the way through high school, she she it and you know kids are unmerciful. Right? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, they're yeah. terrible. And that that only made it worse. Yeah, of you know, course. Shaving, yeah. but yeah, yeah, the laser is a, a really yeah. good remedy yeah. for hair removal. Um, you know, I was I was thinking before that you know there are some things that we do that make life more convenient mm-hmm. for for patients, and hair removal is one of those. Uh, but uh, hair removal can very much be a, a cosmetic kind yeah. of thing for, especially for women with facial hair. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, we do a fair amount of that. We've started doing a fair amount of tattoo removal. Yeah, and it, that's a it, really. You know what? I got. I'm so glad you brought that up because in the back of my mind, I was going to get to Taylor on that, asking if some of these people that uh, have maybe buyer's remorse or regrets you know i had this tattoo when i was five years ago and i liked this guy named bobby and i put this bobby over here <laughs> now what am i going to do i from what i understand this is a growing opportunity oh, yeah. in, in in surgery and everything because there's so many people that are so unhappy with these things they want them gone yeah, I mean, there's there's a whole host of people out yeah. there that not not only yeah. five years yeah. ago, but yeah. had a tattoo put on like yeah. you know, thirty years ago, yeah. and uh, as we age, those yeah. tattoos tend to you know they migrate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. turn into yeah. something different. You know, it how used to be is, a lily, now it's a pumpkin. You know, how yeah, how is a laser used for that? How does it work? How does uh, for tattoo removal? Yeah, yeah so. It, uh, our Pico laser is what we use for that, yeah. and it heats up the particles, the tiny like pigmented <coughs> particles, yeah, yeah. And which which otherwise would be permanent, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. 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 and uh, that energy is delivered so fast that it like makes it break up and vibrates and shatters, and mm. then our body gets rid of that mm. uh, through our lymph system. You know, it's 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 amazing because there's a a leading dermatologist that used to work in Hawaii that's back east now writing books and everything else i mean and and giving the opportunity to people to understand that you know what costs 50 bucks to put on uh you know yeah. one night in chinatown yeah is a it's a lifetime it's, it's, you know? well yeah it's a and lifetime. it costs a little more it, money to take them off than it, put them on it's going to cost yeah. a little more to get rid of it yeah uh but yeah i mean taylor mentioned the pico and uh we just recently got that laser and it's turning out to be very very useful uh, for other things, mm-hmm. but also for tattoos, uh, the you know tattoos are basically just pigment molecules mm-hmm. in the skin. I mean, and they're you know tapped into yeah. the skin, yeah. and they're permanent otherwise. But uh, the but you know the, the thing that bothers me. Excuse me for interrupting, but this what kills me is that we know that our skin is a living organ and, we, and it's re- regenerating all the time. Yeah, but not with a tattoo. Right. I mean, what did you, it, it circumvent the tattoo? Just go around it? Yeah. Well, the uh, yeah, the yeah, the the uh, pigment is in the deeper layers of the skin that don't uh, you know shed uh, the way other layers do. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it, the the Pico laser is uh, is a, a newer kind of laser, and rather than you know most lasers use heat, they generate heat uh, to create an effect. Uh, the pico is more of a mechanical thing, mm-hmm. so you know this, the the wavelength of the laser is directed toward you know specific uh, color of the pigment molecules that are put into the skin in the, in the course of a, of a tattoo, mm-hmm. and rather than heating it up, it you know explodes yeah, those molecules, it blows it up, yeah, yeah. yeah, which is a really cool uh, you know concept. 
um, and and makes it even more effective. Uh, and we've we've had tremendous results yeah. really with that Pico laser getting rid of uh, tattoos. Now you know I I know I'm sure Taylor that what they all want to talk about is it completely going to go away? And I do know that there's probably some that would be pretty hard to get rid of all of it. All of it. I know some people, by the way, are are retattooing over an old one. You know, because they just want to get it covered up. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't they look about getting it removed? Uh, a lot of even the recover ups, um, getting one treatment to, yeah. of laser removal for mm-hmm. your tattoo before you get a cover up uh, can help that cover up look better. Even mm-hmm. uh, things like that. So some people even just come in for yeah. one. Let's get yeah. it removed a little bit and go and get yeah. a cover up tattoo. Doc, would you have ever believed uh, a few years ago that this was going to just explode the way it has across? All social media groups, all ethnicities. I mean, tattoos are like. Oh I, yeah. I hardly knew anybody when I was a kid. That now everybody yeah. it seems good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost everybody has a tattoo Just, in one place or another. Yeah, don't whether you them, can see it or don't not. Don't put them on your forehead if you want to be in customer service. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but but and so is that a growing uh, segment, Taylor, of people that come in accepting this laser treatment for tattoo removal? Absolutely, yeah. and yeah. I think with our Pico. Um, this laser specifically is requiring less treatments than what lasers in the past used yeah. to. We're seeing yeah. Yeah. almost it, complete results in three treatments rather than 11 yeah. of what yeah. people used to have yeah. to go wow, for. Wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, the results are good. Now, uh, we still have it, the tattoos that respond the, mo- uh, the best mm-hmm. are darker inked tattoos, the blacks and the real dark blues. Um, but the more color you get yeah. into the tattoo, the less you're able to kind of eradicate the thing completely. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, we, we can actually do a very good job getting rid of it um, if, if it's the right kind of tattoo. Yeah. But getting back to Taylor's comment before, uh, it, that's that's a real important option for people if they have a tattoo that they don't like. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a tattoo that you know may not be able to be eradicated completely. Yeah. Often it's very beneficial for them to come in for a couple of treatments to lighten that too as much yeah, yeah, ta- that yeah, tattoo as yeah. much as they possibly can and then have a new one put over that you know here in hawaii and and i know taylor i'm sure you're seeing this we have such a, a diverse ethnicity and 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 racial and everything else that there must be some people saying hey i i heard that this was like only good for you know white holly girls you know yeah <laughs> but but in actual fact I'm I'm just guessing that once you know the condition that you're dealing with, there's ways to deal with skin colors and skin conditions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, getting somebody in for a consultation, seeing their skin tone, going over you yeah. know how they react to sun, light, things like that. Everything we have really safe options for mm-hmm. people with darker complexions. Yeah, that's uh, not just it? for yeah. you know. Yeah, the but white the, girl. The, yeah, the, but the other thing is, of course, and and talk about maybe some of these things are. Um, you know, obviously cosmetic, but they but there are health benefits. I mean, if they if they get them dealt with, for instance, Doc, I think we talked about earlier, and maybe you both can discuss this. What about things like skin conditions, like eczema, or like maybe acne, or some of the other things that this might be a treatment for? It is. Yeah, yeah there are there are things like yeah. that. Um, you know, acne, but also precancerous lesions mm-hmm. of. I mean, many people, yeah. most yeah. people. Yeah especially living in Hawaii they've had yeah. so much sun damage that they may have precancerous uh, you know little yeah, guys have melanoma on top of their melanoma <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. layers of it yeah. um and uh, and yeah some of the things that we do can be very effective with get, as far as getting rid of those things mm-hmm. so yeah there are there are medically related things that we do with the laser what treat. i'm interested in, in in taylor because you deal with the patients and you deal with the treatment is that i would i would guess that there's some tr- patients that come in for one procedure had no idea that they can have a different procedure for a different condition. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like you know, like for instance, the lady with the mustache also might have a scar, and I I think that a lot of people are scar conscious. What what can a laser do to help you know mitigate or or or, or lessen or or change a scar? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, less saying scar removal, uh, scar reduction mm-hmm. is the best thing you can really lighten scars. Um, yeah. I've seen good results with that. Scars, including acne scars, yeah. surgical scars, stretch marks are scars. Yeah, um, exactly. I was going to ask about that because obviously stretch marks, Doc, is everything. I mean, yeah. uh, and, and, and I know guys that have stretch marks too. It's oh, not yeah. strictly if you look at this. <laughs> yeah. but, and, and I know that r- with nowadays, because I know myself with my own personal experience, a lot of people that have 
bariatric surgery or other surgeries all have this skin that doesn't want to go back in. So mm-hmm. people start thinking, well, what am I going to do with all of this stuff? You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't yeah, have a yeah, good yeah. You know, uh, technique. No, to... no, nip and, nip and tuck, <laughs> shave and haircut. But right. however, it's just the appearance of the skin. Don't a lot of women, Taylor, get after childbirth a couple of times when they've had these stretch marks? Mm -hmm. You know, I was able to lose the weight, but geez, what can I do about these things? What can they do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Come to us, have a consultation, and, you know, see what we can do. You know, with respect to scar uh, lessening, uh, one thing that we've learned is that uh, if you have a scar that you want to, you know, lessen the appearance as much as possible, it's best to address it early on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, point. rather yeah. than yeah. rather than waiting for, you know, years yeah. Yeah. and letting it kind of develop, um, it, it's actually better to address it not not a very long period of time after they've yeah. had surgery. So, you know, there's p- plenty of people out there that are having, you know, little incisions or whatever on their yeah. face. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the best time to address that is, you know, a short period of time after they've had surgery to keep to uh, lessen that scar as much as they possibly can. Yeah. And that must be another thing, because I'm sure that you see sometimes, uh, Taylor, when a patient or, you know, a new a new a new patient comes to you is that they've had some procedure done of some kind in the past that was not didn't work out too well, whether it was scar removal or, or, or you know, it, what do you call it? <laughs> no Face, job. Facelift. Oh, yeah, yeah, facelifts, all of these things. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I would imagine that some people have really high expectations. So go back again to the consultation part when you're feeling out what this patient is looking for and how do they start feeling when you can start giving them Oh, yeah, well, here's how this would be handled. Here's how this would be treated. Right. It's definitely my most important thing is setting goals with the patient, Mm -hmm. what they're looking to achieve out of this, um, and what we can offer for them to help them achieve those goals. Um, So personal and individualized patient to patient. That's why, you know, we do the free consultation to get somebody in to talk about it. Let me see your skin. Let's see you just do a test spot, see how that works. And by the way, when we say free consultation, you, you you need to know how to do that. So I just recommend just going online, look at the website anyway, and see some of the great things happening. It's uh, veinclinicsofhawaii.com, veinclinicsofhawaii.com. And there's phone numbers for each different location. And the particular location that we're talking about uh, with Taylor and Dr. Julef today is the, the Honolulu location in the Ala Moana building. And that's where that's where I go. Yeah, Yeah. I I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, Taylor just alluded to uh, doing a test spot, Mm -hmm. and um, there are you know there's there's a whole spectrum of uh, skin types, and you you sort of uh, talked about it a little bit before. You know, some uh, lighter skin yeah. people, it seems like you can do just about anything to, and they heal fine you know, without <laughs> any negative repercussions. People who have darker skin, and, uh, you know, obviously in Hawaii, there's plenty. We have plenty, lots of grades of that. Yeah, sure. yeah. a huge yeah. spectrum yeah. of, uh, you know, grades. And um, it's a little trickier to to handle the darker skin mm. person. Uh, and Asian skin also is, mm. you have to be very cautious and uh, take it in a very deliberate, stepwise fashion. Um, so t- two of the things that we do are, number one, the Pico laser that mm. we have is a laser, you know, uh, specifically, uh, you know, developed yeah. to address all skin types. So uh, that's why we've started using that so much. And also, if somebody comes in and we're not sure... Yeah. Usually we just do, ah, yeah. do a little, well, what yeah, Taylor said, I get test it. Yeah, here just comes. a tiny little area yeah, yeah. and make sure that they're going to respond right. okay and before we do the whole thing. Yeah. And that that gives the patient a little more reassurance as far as what they're getting themselves into. You, you know, I, I can I can see people out there because I have the, I, I can see you. I look right through the radio and I know where you are and what you're doing. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of people when they say, it's the Pico laser that are thinking of the belly button because we call the Pico the belly button. Oh, okay. Here. And so this is not necessarily a belly button laser. It probably no. could be used there, but yeah. it, it's, it's called the Pico. It's if, they, not, yeah. if they've got a tattoo around yeah. their belly button, yeah, it'll work. Fixed. But I, I think that it must be fun um, learning, Taylor, as you have, the the changes, not just in the in the machines themselves, but in – the different people that have experimented on different things that then become not experimental but valuable. So the, it must be adding to your repertoire all the time. Yeah, no, yeah. I definitely love yeah. it. It's part yeah. of nursing, of yeah. why I fell in love yeah. with nursing is yeah. the different things that I get to you know, expose myself to and yeah. help people with.
when you have somebody that does one of these test spots, um, generally how quickly do you know whether it took or not? Does it take a little while? Can you see right away? Depending on which laser we're yeah, using, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I usually have them come back two weeks mm-hmm. and see how their skin is reacting. I, I think, Doc, what's interesting, and Taylor said this, and I'm sure this has got to do with the way you run your, the business side of your business, and that is concise records and files because it seems to me like – Somebody might come in for something just totally fun and good fun, but you're going to have a file on that. You're going to know what happened, when, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, actually, that's a, a good question yeah, yeah. and an important point. Yeah, Every time that somebody comes in for a procedure, uh, we were very specific in our documentation because we're using, even though you know a laser does a particular thing with a certain wavelength and all that sort of stuff, we still there are still decisions that we're making with respect to the amount of energy and time yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So uh, we we document all of yeah. those things with each patient, and then we can adjust as needed. You know, if they if they didn't get quite as much of an effect as we wanted them to, then we yeah. up the energy a little more, or vice versa. Yeah, that, that's the key when you talk about that, Taylor. Please explain that because, you know, as as the operator of the equipment, it has. You know, a little bit, a little bit more and plenty. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you, you have to determine. So, how do you make that decision yeah. based on, wh- like, what if I were a patient looking to do something about lines around my eyes? Knock on wood, I don't have too many for an old <laughs> dude. But, but seriously, you need to have people get some sort of an idea. Not just the how much is it part, which we talked about earlier. But, right. okay, when are we going to get started and how long is it going to be and what can we do first? And Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Once yeah. we get that test spot, see how, how you react to yeah, that. Yeah. You know, we start more conservative and, you know, yeah. go from there and build mm-hmm. from there. Depending on the treatment, recovery to when you can have your next treatments, yeah. anywhere from two weeks to eight weeks. Yeah. Um, once again, depends. Hair removal's longer, uh, things like that. So, you know, the, uh, the manufacturer gives guidelines, obviously. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where we kind of start. However, you know, we have to go on our own experience and also, uh, you know, kind of monitor how yeah, the patient yeah. is responding uh, each time. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's kind of a number of things that we utilize to figure out where we're going to start with any one patient uh, with respect to how we're going to utilize that laser. Okay. Now, gang, if you're just tuning in, we're not talking about venous surgery today with Dr. Julia. We're talking with uh, Taylor Busker. She is a registered nurse in the office and also has osmosed into being in charge of the laser procedures. And these laser procedures are basically, uh, you're elect- it's elective work, elective surgery. And and the, the applications are terrific. We learned a little bit about um, mustache removal for ladies and, and hair removal. And I'm, and I'm sure a lot of that has to do with... Um, the, the ladies come in that are beach ladies that want their bikini lines and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm more interested on how you've dealt, now that you've been there doing this for a while, how you've got a patient that comes back for the next step and says, hey, by the way, what else can I do? I'm so happy with all this stuff going on. And by the way, here's my sister. She wants some stuff too. Yeah, no, yeah. word of mouth is yeah. definitely our best friend. Yeah. I think people are actually getting really good results. and that's Vainclinicsofhawaii.com. <laughs> That'll get you started. I know you send a yeah. lot of people to that. Um, so generally speaking, uh, much like Dr. Juliff when he has somebody in for a leg procedure, if you're going to be in and have a procedure, it's going to be anywhere from uh, 10 minutes to an hour, but never more than that, right? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. And and typically, what is the icebreaker for most people? What brings the the most people in for to talk about laser brings the most yeah well, is it hair removal is it you know is it lines is it scars i is think it... it's hair removal and fine lines and wrinkles yeah the yeah. sun damage the dark spots that mm. we get are my most common that we have but we also get anything from people that have rosacea hyperpigmentation yeah. um yeah now doc there's isn't there a difference in some of these things maybe they wouldn't be quite so elective that they might be an actual medical treatment that is done for a medical condition yes and no i like we were talking about before you know sometimes people can have 
uh, you know, dermatologic problems yeah. with their face uh, that, uh, you know, they're going to be benefiting from, you know, from a medical kind of standpoint. Uh, unfortunately, even in those situations, yeah. insurance doesn't cover yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, well, we, also know, we know from other discussions that <laughs> insurance companies are not trying to invent new ways to cover stuff. No, yeah. they are not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think probably uh, I would say uh, hair removal is probably yeah. number one, yeah. wouldn't mm-hmm. you say, Taylor? Yes. Uh, and then also sun damage just in mm-hmm. general. Now, you know, many people come in with, uh, you know, pigmentation yeah. and, you know, blue spot or uh, brown spots and red spots. And, uh, you know, the the lasers that we have do a very good job. With can't, can't, some of that, that. Doc, can't some of that either minimize or eliminate a, a worse situation going on there if you don't treat it. Do, do it, it could. Yeah, it it yeah, very well yeah, could, sure. Yeah. And uh, and I think, uh, and then fine, fine lines and wrinkles, and I think especially sun damage with respect to pigment mm-hmm. and fine line and, and wrinkles, which are also kind of fall under the category of sun damage, I think people uh, become the, the, the happiest about that mm-hmm. because yeah. it really does change their appearance. Taylor, what about that? That you know, that we have so many people that in the hospitality area work outside. We got surfboard instructors, we got beach attendants, we got gals, uh, you know, working around the pools and 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 servers and everything else. They're in the sun all the time. This must come as a real, a real blessing for some of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, give us, a, you know, for instance, if if you if you get continually sunburned, you, you should be you shouldn't be in the sun. We know that. But what what remedy is there if you've got these conditions that were brought upon the sun Uh, by the sun well sunscreen 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 and then also yeah we can you know treat some of that with lasers you know Mm -hmm. if we get you out of the sun for a few weeks and calm down that uh browning of the skin then you know we can use laser treatments to help that and and that's an important thing you know with respect to uh uh, educating the patient for the future because you know a lot of people will come in and have these uh, procedures done and then they're back out in the sun the, sun again. the next day and yeah. uh but it's it's so important you know taylor just mentioned sunscreen sunscreen sun, sunscreen but uh you, you know you have yeah. to protect your skin yeah. especially facial skin and well, especially in a place like hawaii well, what about other things i do know that i i had this friend um his name was well they called him corky when we were kids mm-hmm. and he had like he was one big freckle his whole body he was like freckles and I know that with fair skin and redheads, particularly, that that's an issue. Is that is is are freckles something that, that get dealt with uh, with laser treatment, or can they be? That's a good question. See, uh, I get paid we, big bucks for asking these questions. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, none of this is rehearsed. If we had to do this show over again, it'd be completely different. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah you know, we've never, I don't, I don't think we've ever treated yeah. somebody for, for you know, okay. freckles. Okay, so if, do I have a freckle volunteer out there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go to paintclinicsofwhi.com. Come, Come in. We'll yeah, give we'll, you a spot check. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a spot test. Exactly. We'll get rid of one of those spots. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think, though, that, you know, it sounds to me, Taylor, is, you know, I do know that as an RN and previously working in, in ER and everything else, that's when you see things that are really, you know, kind of tough sometimes, right? Yeah. Uh, this, this must be very gratifying in that what may not be health-threatening, it might be lifestyle-threatening or self-esteem-threatening. I'm more interested in having people walk out of there saying, bring it on, world. I'm ready to face you a little bit better than I was yesterday. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think... Uh being a nurse is getting somebody to feel better, whether that be, you know, yeah. from a broken bone or, you know, your self-confidence. And that goes from all different arenas. Uh, and yeah. being at Bain Clinics of Hawaii has brought me to, you know, from that broken bone okay, to you self-confidence. Know Let me ask you this, because I think this is cool, because I'm a patient at Bain Clinics myself. And I know that some of the other people that are waiting in the waiting room are there for other reasons. And there's a nice video that running and there's the brochures and everything else. Are you finding more people are coming into the vein clinic to have a vein procedure and say, hey, listen, what's this all about? Tell me about this and how can I get on some of that? Yeah, I think that's most of our first patients that we have right now. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I was going to I was going to talk about that before uh, when you asked about where do we get our patients from, but a lot of them come from yeah, our yeah, vein patients yeah. uh and uh, and yeah it's good because uh, like you say they come into the waiting room yeah. and they see the other uh you know things that we have there uh with respect to education about lasers mm-hmm. and how they can be beneficial uh and they start asking about it yeah. and uh, they start thinking you know about it i think a lot of people 
have to go through, uh, you know, a decision making process before they actually get to, uh, gee, I want to, yeah. I want to yeah. go yeah. ahead and do this. Um, so, uh, so yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. pressure corner there. I haven't seen anybody getting rubber hosed or anything. No. I mean, it's instantly <laughs> famous. There. And and what I, what we need you to do, and we want to thank. Uh, Taylor for coming in and sharing uh, her experience and, and what she does. What we need you to do is to go to veinclinicsofhawaii.com. That's veinclinicsofhawaii.com and, and check out some of the, the great services. We'll see you next time. In the meantime, uh, remember, you know, you, you go and check it out at veinclinicsofhawaii.com. You'll be absolutely amazed at how much it's like you can say, hey, this is at last. I got it. Let's get going on this stuff already, shall we? Well, that's our program for today, and we certainly hope you enjoyed meeting us. Please come back next week for our next episode. And in the meanwhile, to learn more, please visit our interactive website, veinclinicsofhawaii.com. That's veinclinicsofhawaii.com.